Last year, when the Saints Row website changed to that graffiti wall which was leading up to the first official reveal of the game, I was hyped. Part of me was hoping that we would return to a type of game like Saints Row 1 and 2, because I'll admit, I'm a fanboy for those games, and I always liked them more than the later Saints Row titles. I never hated the later ones, but I always just preferred the first two. And then came the trailer, and then I stopped caring about the game for a long time. It reminded me of Watch Dogs 2, only a lot cheesier. But hey, I saw some people saying that maybe the story would get darker and the cheesy stuff was just to throw us off or something. Which I doubted, but something I was hoping for was that the gameplay would at least be good enough to make up for a bad story. And then the game came out. But I was generously given a copy to see for myself just what it's like. Maybe I would end up liking it. Maybe it's not as bad as I keep on hearing. Crap, crap, shit, crap, goddamn fucking shit, crap, crap, son of a bitch, ass, white, piss, wipe, crap, 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 and crap. Wow. You know, I never used to be the biggest fan of Saints Row the Third, and I still think it was a step down from Saints Row 2 in a lot of ways. But I think this reboot makes me appreciate Saints Row 3 a little more. And let me just say, this isn't the worst game I've ever played, but it is the least fun I've had with a game in a while. I think it's a mix of the weird story, bad dialogue, a nicely detailed open world that's unfortunately pretty barren, and gameplay that to me just feels mediocre. I might as well start off talking about the story. I remember when the developers said it was going to be a millennial power fantasy. Yeah. The game features our characters trying to make rent, wallowing in self-pity, and committing crimes to pay off student loan debt and afford a very expensive waffle maker. I'm guessing this was their way of trying to make it relatable. And that all sounds fine and dandy, but the only problem is, and this is just my personal opinion, the story is just dumb. And not dumb in a good way, like Saints Row 3 and 4, where, yeah, the stories are stupid, but at least they're funny at times, and the characters were memorable. But this feels like Saints Row on the Disney Channel. We should do something irresponsible to celebrate. What do you have in mind? Oh, I don't know, the money fight! <laughs> 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 what the actual goddamn motherfucking goddamn fuck? It even has a message about friendship or something. They called it a millennial power fantasy, but it feels like it's targeted towards even younger audiences. As a millennial, I think it has a very how-do-you-do-fellow-kids vibe to it. A lot of corny dialogue as well. I don't know, maybe I'm just not in this game's target age demographic. Saints Row was never Red Dead Redemption in terms of the story, but is something that isn't completely lame too much to ask for? Moving on from that, I want to touch upon something that I actually do like about the game. The map itself is actually not that bad, and it's a big improvement over Steelport. The game takes place in a fictional area called Cavanaugh County, mostly in the city of Santo Eleso, but also with countryside surrounding it. The countryside is what you would expect. It's a desert. The city itself feels varied. You've got a rundown casino strip like if Vegas never updated anything beyond the mid-80s. Upper, middle, and lower class residential. A few commercial districts dotted around. Overall, you could tell they wanted to do something that wasn't like Steelport, where you had every neighborhood that felt exactly the same. And I just like the fact that it's set in the Southwest. Sometimes I even wish I lived in Arizona, so location-wise, I like it. Having said that, the world doesn't exactly feel alive. NPCs in Saints Row 2 used to do so much, and there were thousands of nodes hand-placed across the map that could trigger various NPC actions. It all helped make the world feel a little bit more lively. But in Santo Eleso, it's mostly like how it was in Steelport. People just walking around and not doing or saying much. Sometimes it doesn't even feel like there's a lot of people around at all. Vehicle density doesn't seem too bad on my end, though, so there is that. But it just feels like while the map itself looks nice, that's all there really is to it. There's also not a lot of interiors. I'll get to that a little later. The audio design is also a little out of whack at times. Gunshots don't sound loud enough, sometimes explosions are too quiet, which is probably a glitch, and vehicle engines sound muffled. And while I can't play any of the in-game radio music on here, sometimes the radio volume will go up too high for a second. I think it happens when you pass by other cars playing the same song. It's like the game doesn't know how to handle this, so it just increases the volume. Now let's talk about the missions. Some of them are oddly designed to say the least, and a lot of them involve you performing the same thing over and over again, which is gunning down loads of enemies, a trap that a lot of open world games sadly fall into. To me, it felt like Saints Row 3 had more unique missions, although Saints Row 3 also had a lot of missions that were literally activities, so I'm not trying to say that that one was flawless either. Other missions feel like they're stretched out way too long, like this one. 
First, we have to clear out the construction yard outside of the church. Then, we have to kill mercenaries. Then, we have to kidnap a real estate guy and drive like a maniac to scare him into giving up a deed for the church. To scare him, first you have to drift a few times. Then, you have to drive into oncoming traffic. Then, you have to do not one, not two, not three, not even four, but five stunt jumps before he gives it up. It doesn't even feel like we're trying to scare him at this point. It's like we're just showing off our driving skills. Oh, and by the way, that's not the end of the mission. Now you gotta go back to the church, parkour your way into it, and fight off the idols at three different locations. All of that stuff in just one mission. And the first time I did this, it took me a while to finish it properly. First, I got killed during the idols fight. Then the game crashed while it was loading, so I had to start the whole thing over from the beginning. Then I failed the mission because I accidentally ran into the wrong part of the church, which the game took as abandoning my friends. But that wasn't even the dumbest mission failure I've had in this game. There's a stealth section in the game that's unlike any other stealth section I've seen in any game. I did their version of stealth, which is basically just not standing too close to anybody for too long. Then I followed the objectives. Talk to this guy, destroy the servers, then the gunfight that's scripted to happen started to happen, and when that happened, I failed the mission. Which brings us to our next point. There was a pretty hefty amount of glitches in the game when it launched, many of which may still be present. But that's not really just a Saints Row problem, that's a problem with a lot of games released today. It's like getting to pay for the experience of being a QA tester. My favorite glitch that I've seen so far has to be this. I've seen a lot of people comparing this game to games like Grand Theft Auto 4, but that's unfair. Even in 2008, Rockstar had a ton of money and resources to put towards their product. Volition are a much smaller studio. Therefore, if you compare it to any old game, I'd say it's fair to compare it to Saints Row 1 and 2. And when you start comparing it to those, you almost wonder whether they were having serious development issues or serious budget issues, or both. Remember earlier how I mentioned that the world feels dead? Well, another problem is the fact that there's a serious lack of interiors in this game, which is the same problem that Steelport had. The map was supposed to be this modern-day city, but you're gonna spend a majority of your time outside. Places that are used in missions are never gonna be seen again outside of those missions. Now, some might ask, what do you care if you can't go into a bunch of buildings in a game set across a city? Well, I just think it's nice to be able to have something additional to explore. And it helps add to the feeling that it's a living, breathing city, not just a map that feels like a backdrop or a movie set. Another thing that early Saints Row games did better was the radio stations. In my opinion, they're just not as fun to listen to in the reboot. It kind of feels like they blew most of the soundtrack budget just to license one track by DMX. With a few exceptions here and there, most of it is pretty unremarkable, and a lot of it sounds like it was done on the cheap. For example, Tumbleweed Radio is country music, but some of it sounds like it might be stock music with lyrics added. Out of the 10 radio stations available to listen to, I think I ended up liking Dos Ochos and the classical music station the most. During an interview with Game Informer, one of the game's writers mentioned that there were over a dozen radio stations to listen to, but in the final game, there's only 10. As long as he wasn't being hyperbolic about this, then a few radio stations definitely got cut. I would not be surprised if one of the cut radio stations happened to be this game's equivalent of The Mix, which in Saints Row 2, 3, and 4 played popular songs from the 80s and 90s. Songs like that are great to listen to, but they cost a ton of money to license. So if they were working on a tighter budget than they had before, then I guess not being able to listen to Duran Duran was a sacrifice they had to make. Or the B-52s, because they all sing Love Shack at the end. I'm not joking either. Maybe that was going to be on the radio, too. It wouldn't have a place to go on the current radio station lineup, but if there was something like The Mix, then it would have gone perfectly on that. Anywho, that was my experience with Saints Row 22. It's not the worst thing I've played, but it's probably the least fun thing I've played this year. And the most disappointing. I've been waiting for something like Saints Row 2 for a long time now. But this game, unfortunately, doesn't scratch that itch. And it sucks to have to say that, too. I'm a fan of a lot of games by Volition, and I think they've done some really great stuff in the past. But the Saints Row reboot just doesn't feel like a very complete experience. Nor does it feel like something that lives up to what the previous games managed to achieve. But it does appear to be selling quite well. So there's that, at least. The whole thing just feels like missed potential. If I had to rate it, I would give it... Oh, I don't know. Let's say five waffle irons out of ten. What are your thoughts on the new Saints Row? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you wish they would have done something like Saints Row 1 and 2? Or are you happy with the direction they've taken? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know. Thank you for watching.